Hi, welcome to our channel. This is a new channel. This is uh, Old School Pat. Hi. And I'm Vance Hall Neal. This is, uh, we're going to review uh, hard media music of uh, records, 78s, 45s, Cassettes. CDs. And we'll talk about our favorite albums, our favorite uh, bands or artists, and uh, favorite genres. Guilty Pleasures. I think that'll be a fun one. It'll be a fun episode. I got a couple of those. As you can see up there. I won't put the camera up there, but you know, you know what it is. Uh, so, Pat, you'll, you'll know him from, uh, what will we know you from? Uh, I went on Jerry Springer once. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that a little bit. Well, so that was just a fun college thing to do. But anyway, <clears throat> I can only hope that our, that our uh, YouTube <laughs> you know, show will get as many views as, as I've got before. That was on YouTube, right? Yeah. So that was what I was most famous for. Then I was with another, um, a little band named Infant Mortality for a while there. For still, a while there? Well, still in Infant Mortality. Yeah. <laughs> and they have a uh, CD and a record. Let's see if we can get a little... Uh, I know the CD's in the closet, but the record should be right over here. What do you have, the uh, the first press or the second um, press? I don't know. <laughs> I have I have a press. Okay, I got Boomtown Rats, Models, Taylor Uber. So, we did a little record in 1994, a split with Violent Society, and it was <clears throat> reviewed in national magazines like Flipside and Max and Rock and Roll. East Coast Assholes. Yep. Got that in. Uh, oh, that's original press. Yeah. In the. Uh, where did I get this? Noise pollution. Oh, in Philly. Yeah. Nice. And for four ninety nine. That's cool. Better than the ninety nine cent then. <clears throat> yeah, you got the uh, the insert for it. That's pretty cool. You're not on here. That's violence. But well, yeah, with violent society. I'm not on there. What the hell? This is not the insert you're thinking of. Okay. The one that's got like your license. Oh, is that picture. like an ad? Yeah, it's like an ad. Oh, okay. I guess that I, that's Pat like Pat Society and shit. I guess I don't really know that band that well, but oh, this is all the. Uh, 1994. The violent society stuff. A big fuck you to infant mortality. Nice. See, I cussed. Oh well. I'm leaving that in because I'm reading it. I'm dictating. Dead Elpis Records. I don't even know what that is. Yeah, well, I'm sure they're not around anymore. <laughs> <laughs> You'd probably be surprised, though. I don't. I don't know. Yeah. Um. No, I'm really proud of that record. I really like that record. So talk about that cover there. Uh, so we had nothing to do with the name of the uh, the record, East Coast Tassels. We had nothing to do with the cover of the record, which was the producer of the record. Marty Munch, I think was his name. Marty Munch? Mm hmm And uh, he put himself, producer put himself on the cover. That's but, so uh, weird. Weird. But maybe it sold more than if it had one of our ugly mugs on it. I don't know. Is he a popular fella? I didn't know him. <clears throat> I only met him the day we went up and recorded that. And, uh, funny, I can remember that day at all because it was drinking Ice House back then. <laughs> Ooh, is that malt liquor? Uh, I don't think it was quite malt, but it was definitely like the like the ice blend of, of beer, where it's like you know stronger and yeah, like butt ice or whatever. So for infant mortality, that's breakfast <clears throat> and lunch. Yeah. What about you? You know, have you put out anything, uh, any music in the world? Uh, I've been in some bands, I've done some podcasts, done some art, dance on Neil. Oh yeah, I've got your uh, I've got your records from Jamaica. And yeah, your tapes too. Got some stuff. Here's the new one, the fully fully bad dance hall Neil tapes. Fully bad. You know, we'll talk about that. We should have an episode of. Not that's focusing. Oh well, doesn't matter. We, should, we could do an episode of like our music stuff. We could show like the CD off. We could show the tapes off. That's what I'm doing recently. Um, I was in the Blood Brothers with Ben, Cartoon Ben. 
Oh, um, Ben Kingsley? Yeah, I played clarinet in that. Nice. And mutant tapes with... Damien? No, with uh, Frank. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then Ape Man with Damien. That's right. And Dance Hall Neo podcast. A lot of Guyanese fans on that Mixelar Dance Hall Neo podcast watch. That's cool. They love Dance Hall. So I like to think I showed them, like, a different different cultures, you know, from punk to, to jazz or whatever. Very nice. Not that I, I don't, I wouldn't say jazz, but, you know, my weird free form. So, yeah. So we're going to do some shows. Hopefully I can post something once a week. I figured, you know, we'll record a few when we do get together and we can post. And so if we don't get up once a week, we'll have something to post once a week. You have a big local following. So you can share with your, you know, via media. And I have uh, my Guyanese fans, I guess. and Jamaican fans. They like YouTube a lot now. Yeah, I like YouTube is where it's at. I can go on YouTube. The 45 died over there in 2011. I was buying them. You see those crates there? It's got three crates of them. Oh, wow. I'm just That's buying them up. And then, like, one day, it was just like that. Mm. They send them to the UK. And we buy them from the UK. Just dried up. And then I read that, you know, the record uh, pressing plants were dying over there. Mm. Yeah, it's expensive to make records. <clears throat> yeah, and slow. you know, even in third world countries, like, they got that phone, they can get that internet. So that's the, that's where it's at right now. Yeah. Definitely a lot cheaper to make a CD. Oh, it is, but guess what? It's a lot cheaper to make a tape. Oh, yeah, a tape, yeah. So we'll talk about, uh, you know, I, I was going to look at my notes. My notes are on my phone. Oh, nice. <laughs> But it, so, I was, so I was thinking for the next few episodes we could do, uh, and we'll record them um, here in my house or at uh, Old School Pat's um, place of residence. Uh, you said you have all your, your media. They could show like oh, CDs yeah, and yeah. records and talk about it. You have your list and shit. Oh, I do. I have my list on Discogs. Um, but, you know, I, I think I, th well, I want to do like a spreadsheet. Because yeah, I can get on, I can log on to Discogs mm -hmm. and, and look at everything if I want to pull something up. It's all there. Nice. Like all this shit. But uh, I feel like it, like a like a list would be better. Because you know some stuff is like CDR, like say like the like the new Vibes Cartel came out mm. a couple days ago from jail. Yeah. Nice. He's still recording. Mm -hmm. So it's called to uh, Tashino, I, Tashino, just like Tashino, his wife or whatever. Oh, okay. So he made like an album, like a concept album for her. It has like, uh, like Sick of Rhymes is on it and um, Jesse Royal is on it. Jesse Royal is a roots, real nice roots, uh, um, contemporary reggae artist, you know, like a protege or, um, anyway. I'm sure I like it. It's good, but it's, it's, you, like, I don't, it, I like 90% of it. But, you know, I have high standards when it comes to fucking virus cartoon. I, <laughs> I have, I'll edit that out. I, I'll have, I have high standards when it comes to Mr. Virus Cartel. But, but like I was saying, I, I bought that. Mm -hmm. So, on Discogs, it might only let me put it on, like, CD, and there might not be a CD out there. Yeah. Or a file. Yeah. But if I did a spreadsheet, or you have your list, you can be like, this is, like, CDR... You know, or digital download or whatever, which I don't buy many of, but I, I tend to buy quite a few from Amazon, the the uh, digital marketplace. That's another thing we'll be talking about, streaming services and uh, digital stores. Like, I use market, uh, Marketplace, I use um, Amazon Digital Music Store uh, for a lot of uh, dance hall and reggae uh, releases and I also use the free version of Spotify. Uh, what do you use well, digitally? <clears throat> digitally, I digitally. use. Uh, I have um, all of my CDs, um, which translates to about eleven thousand songs on my iPod Classic. I I couldn't even put that into albums. Yeah, yeah. so it's neat because uh, there's no. It's just all. Um, what I like, which is like no classic rock, you know, no Led Zeppelin, no okay. Kiss, no filler. Uh, you know, it's just, it's just what I like. And it's that's so, one thing we have in common. 
and um, like you know, it could play for three to four weeks straight, you know, without playing the same thing twice. So and so you nice. digitized all of that. Yeah, it was a it was a nice hobby. Maybe I'll go on discography discogs next. You and, should. And, and, and something else to do. You know? That's easier. Yeah. But it's also <clears> fun. <throat> and you know what the the cool thing about the discogs app? I wish I could show it, but my phone's right there. Mm-hmm. It's a uh, it'll it tells you what your collection's worth. No way. Yeah. I'm gonna do that. So that sounds really cool. My my maximum is forty grand, and the minimum is like fifteen. Ooh, interesting. So it's like wow. So they're looking at probably like <laughs> you could be there. So they're like you could buy this like expensive record, but if it's shot the shit, mm-hmm. then uh, right. Does so does it take into <laughs> account the grade of the record? Like, it does. Uh, that's that's why it's saying like the maximum would be forty grand. Oh, okay. if, if my stuff was very good plus to mint. So they. But it, like they put it on if it was poor, it would only like fetch this, and that would be your yeah. range. Like you could you could buy a, a piss poor record, um, a rare record, which I can actually show you an example of for five dollars. You get it with like very good plus, with the sleeve and everything. Grade might cost you a hundred dollars. Yeah. You know. Well, you know, like Mike Pritchett was telling me the other day, he said, you know, went on Discogs. I wanted to get Life Is Ugly, so why not kill yourself? Which is um, a punk. A hardcore punk compilation from the early '80s, and he said they wanted forty for it, and I'm like, really? So he's buying off of this dog, huh? Yeah. Oh, interesting. But I was, I was like, I had no idea my record was was forty. Right, that you have, right. you know, probably could get forty for it plus. Yeah, probably more depends where you are. All right, so I'll I'll give you an example of a couple of albums that uh, that it might read as a fifty dollar or a hundred dollar album. That is probably only worth five or ten dollars. Studio One, I see that. Yeah, Double Roy Wilson, uh, good all over, you Ooh. know. So that's. See, this is an example of an expensive record that's worth five bucks. Yeah, this is a this is the five ten bucks, you know. Wow. That's, you know, but you got you don't have the sleeve, you don't have. Uh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. You see, and I wrote it on there. Right. Here's another one. The best of Madu. Oh wow! On Techniques label, the, original uh, Techniques Madu label was um, sounded a lot like um, Tour of Sandy, didn't he? He he did, yeah. But he came out at the time um, of uh, the Slack uh, dance oh, hall okay. era, you know, eighty two. General Echo and mm-hmm. all them there. He's he's known for uh, doing sh- uh, stuff with uh, General Echo. Uh, speaking of speaking of which what's that RCA you got on there yeah cause he's got uh, hey here's one he's, uh, see this is you you Madu now he had a he had a uh, a brother uh, that went by the same name but you you Madu so and they were both around the same time period and see I, I like that back cover though Nice. See, I just I just eat that early age. One of my favorite uh, forms of Jamaican music is that 1980. I, I do love the early stuff. Dance hall. And then here's 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 the the RCA, mm-hmm. uh, the Prince Buster, the Ten Commandments. Oh, nice. But, but yeah, so <laughs> but I guess yeah, I love these records that you're pulling out. But they but you're not. They're getting, only five bucks because there's no sleeve. There's no sleeve. This one is a little rough. This one is a little bit rough, as you can see. She's a, she's a little bit rough. She plays with no skipping. Well, that's it's important. But you know, she's she's a little, yeah. she's a little rough. I don't know if you can see that, but uh, you know what it is, Prince Buster. Yeah. So I was like, I have to have that, and yeah, I, I all, found one, and I was like, you know what? All I, very worthwhile, regardless you, you, of having a sleeve or not. I would I would buy them all. You know, well. it's just keeping an eye on like two hundred dollars. I can't do that. It's like. And you know what? I, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be honest with you. The uh, the record sleeve for this isn't even that cool. I mean, it's pretty cool, but I've seen it. He kind of looks yeah. like he's where he's like in a gospel thing, you know. <laughs> it's a great record, though. Yeah, totally, Prince Buster, the man. So those are some examples. Those are those were pretty much my, really my only examples because I try not to do that unless you know, I'm like Daddy must have. So what are your what uh what are your some of your favorite genres? 
just you know <clears throat> good old good old various topic introductory video sure well i think that the uh story of music pretty much starts with elvis um, well there you go see i got some elvis <laughs> and um, i think that's fair that, that's the beginning and then you know the, all the 50s the rockabilly stuff and um, going into the 60s, some James Brown, and then... See, I don't want to interrupt you, but that's that's a good... Yeah. <clears throat> that's, a, that's a good... Uh, Thanks. Nice. And then, uh, of course, I love all the music from the 60s, except for... Elaborate on that. Well, okay, I'm, I'm not the world's biggest Beatles fan. Yeah, like garage rock and... But, I mean, I love... I mean, I have no problem <clears throat> with... Uh, yeah, I love all the garage rock stuff. I love the psychedelic stuff. I love yeah, yeah. Soul stuff. You get into the Frank Zappa. Zappa's okay, but I really like Captain Beefheart. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> nice. I have, you know, I bought everything Beefheart. You can't go wrong. Yeah. Up to 1980, you yeah. can't go. Ice cream for crow. I, I even like that one. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah. I mean, maybe unconditional guaranteed. Oh. I'll skip that one. But, all right. But other than that, I mean, I'd still rather listen to Bad Beefheart than... And a lot of good other things. You know. I'd rather listen to Bad Beef Art than Bad Zappa. Definitely. Yeah. Dark A60s and... Oh, yeah. So, I mean, going on, I mean, I like, I like the, uh, the Nugget stuff. And in the 70s, come in. Um, can't really think of a lot of early 70s stuff I like besides the punk prototypes like MC5, yeah. Flame and Groovy. Dolls and shit. Right, dolls. The immediate pre-punk stuff like Perubu, Devo, all that, like that. Um... The whole punk rock explosion, whether it was New York or London, and all the cities that it migrated to after that, love it all. I had some great Irish punk bands, and oh, great yeah, yeah. English punk bands, great American punk bands. You know, they're all. That's why I liked the punk. When I got into punk, when I was in sixth or seventh grade, I thought punk was something that old people did and it petered out in '79. I didn't know hardcore or pop punk. And I liked it because it was all different. It all sounded different, all the bands. And it was all different ideology and shit. Mm -hmm. yeah, I love it. You know, some were, like, some could be, you could have a punk band back then that was far right. Or a punk band like, like Wayne County or like uh, Black Randy or, you know. All different, all different. Yeah. Different yeah. things to say. And that's yeah. important. Yeah, and, uh, and it, was, it was good when it wasn't, so, you know, so uniform and all that. Yeah. Uh, or punk by numbers. I so say take but, it from uh, take it from the seventies and the eighties continue. You know, with the punk, the hardcore punk, yeah, yeah, the hardcore, and, and the uh, hardcore. Crucifix was a good band. Great band. Um, you know, you have some stuff around the, the mid eighties, <clears throat> like Seven Seconds or Black Market Baby, or you know, before the crossover. I feel like that. I feel like right before the crossover, like you could, you could. Tell me stuff that I would not even begin to even know. Yeah. And then, of course, um, I love Jamaican music of all eras. Yeah. I, did, I don't know what it was, but as a very young, you know, I um, I just got into the history of the island and the music uh, from the beginnings, Mento and Ska, all the way through the dance hall era. Um, made it to Sunsplash in Jamaica. That's, that's nice. In uh, 2009. And uh, so really, that's just an overview of my taste, which, you know, it's no better than anybody else's. It's just what I dig. I like, I like how it, I, I like how you continue with the dance hall stuff, but then kind of like peter out with rock, just kind of like. Yeah, you know, uh, I really, I, I did grow up listening to, to heavy metal, but, uh, you know, your Metallica and Slayer. Your Slayers and your. And the crossover bands, but. I just, I just kind of... Plasmatics is a good one. Yeah. But it's like, you know what I don't like about that? Like, yeah. people are, well, they're not a punk band. So what? You know, I, I wouldn't necessarily say that they were or they weren't. Yeah. Good band. Not everything, but I have a few yeah. albums I like, you know? Yeah. Wendy O. Williams, yeah. Gotta respect mm -hmm. her. Yeah. I even have the rap album. I wouldn't suggest it. <laughs> but I got it. You know, let's take a peek at that. Actually, now I'm not going to do that. Is this the one that, you're... That'll be, that'll be a guilty pleasure episode. That's going to be a guilty... We'll, we'll save that. Yeah, that's real guilty. That's and, it, it, uh, Is it, it Plasmatics or Wendy O? That's Wendy O, man. Oh, okay. And the Hometown Girls. Oh, 
is, is what it is. I, I'm, I, I'm not going to bust that out. For, that's a guilty pleasure. Wow, I never even heard of that. It was, and the, 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 the crying shame is one of the last things she did before she, uh, you know. Yeah. And all that. Yeah. I know that uh, <clears throat> Lemmy really liked her a lot. Well, Motorhead was great. I mean, he wrote a song about Wendy O. Williams. I need, I need more <laughs> Motorhead. I don't know how much uh, Motorhead that you have, but I, do, I don't have a lot of Motorhead. I have some compilation discs uh, uh, from Motorhead. But since we're on the topic of it, mm. um, let me get something. Whatever. I'm going to show off this. Uh, I got... Uh, Wendy O. Williams with uh, Lemmy doing Stand By Your Man. Here it is. Oh, wow. Nice. Yeah, but you see, the the only thing about the production is just complete crap. I don't like that. Because, you know, when I... I like pl plasmatics as a production. When you, when you put all the albums on, it's a big sound. Even the live stuff is like, oh, big sounds. Because it's meant to be big. They're meant to be a big sound. Not low, no lo-fi there. And pink vinyl. Nice. But this, I just wish the production was better. I re yeah. I'm really not happy with the production on this. But you have, you know, you check that out there. That's an 82? Yeah, it's early. Oh, uh -huh. But the production. Oh yeah, no class. That was uh -huh. the song you wrote uh, for for Wendy O. Very cool. I just wish well, the they did that in concert when I saw them. They always played no class. I just wish the production was better mm -hmm. for this particular uh, forty five. My favorite Motorhead uh, release was. Well, what do you got? What what Motorheads well, my, do you got? My favorite one is the is the live in nineteen ninety nine one called Everything Louder Than Everyone Else. Live record, huh? Double, I, double set. And, I've seen them live. Loudest band I ever saw. Yeah, it was the loudest band I ever loudest. saw. Loudest. Well. Yep. I couldn't hear for about uh, two weeks, it was, which scared uh, the hell out of me. They were the loudest band I ever saw. Ramones were the next loudest. Are you serious? Yep. I never saw the Ramones live, so they were loud, huh? They were in Philly in 1990. 1990? 90, no, 94. See, here's here's the thing about the Ramones, man. I'm I'm... Got all their albums. I'm into. I'm buying the fucking live bootlegs now, which you gotta watch out because if it, you know, you want you want to have a good sound. You want to hear the vocals. I like the Ramones. Well, I don't like a lot of live albums. I like the Ramones because like they'll do a rendition. It's always faster. Yeah. And uh, Joey Ramone always changes the vocal up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like he'll add a little Loo, or you know something to it. Mm -hmm. So it's almost kind of like a different song. I always love yeah. that. Well, everybody knows It's Alive was a great concert, the New Year's Eve concert in 1978, 77, 78. Yeah, uh, that was in, that was UK. Yeah. We didn't get that till 95, I think it was a 95 United States release, right? Really? Huh. Well, I guess I have it a record. It was, it was a later yeah, United States release, maybe, maybe for the CD. Uh, and then there was, uh, <clears throat> I remember the one they did um, Let's find out. with CJ, which was Loco Live, that was a good one. Oh, yeah, that was good. It's alive. The first U.S. release in 1995. Oh, no kidding. First released in 1979. Yeah. That is a good one, though. It's like the first, like, live taste, you yeah. know? Um, so my, here's my boots. And here's a boot. Heads. I like it because it's 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 later on. Oh, uh, cool! So you, know, slow slow. you get like different stuff. Thirty four. Production can be muddy. Nine, live in ninety six. So yeah, it was uh, towards the end, but like it takes you know they're playing songs like stuff from Acid Eaters. Yeah, and then you don't see that a lot on live on live albums. Yeah, yeah. Get a good. Uh... See, I can't wait. We sh we got to do one at your house so you can. Oh, put yeah. stuff up. That's why I yeah. wanted you to bring some stuff, but you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, I figured with the band you place, maybe we could do some of yours over here and then some of mine over there. Well, hell yeah. So, I mean, I'll take stuff. 
I'll take like a if we do yeah totally bring stuff if we do like guilty pleasures I'll just bring a bag over there and be like you know yeah that's cool now for me uh for me personally I we have uh I'm not gonna go into too much detail on um in case he watches it who who I wanted to do the show with but you know um he was not interested and you know I wish him well. We worked in, uh, we did a lot of different um, noise stuff together, you know, and we have similar tastes as well as we do. Uh, you know, I, I like, uh, some of the earliest music I have is probably Mento stuff from the mid-40s. Um, but I, I have stuff from the, the like the early, like 1930s, the French Dadaist stuff. Um... And a lot of uh, experimental things like that. It was like futurist mm. French dataist things where they were doing like um, orchestras with like traffic going by and stuff. And that was revisited in the 60s from like the Fluxus movement. You could you could say that uh, Yoko was loosely um, in that, but it's more like, uh, like artists like Henning Christensen and Philip Corner. Um, and then I like whole history of Jamaican music up till up till today mm -hmm. um I know you, you kept more contemporary with it than I did just in terms of everything the flow and the, uh, you know, it, that that happened from me getting more and more and more in, into the internet because that was a little bit of that I had a little bit of a lag uh when it comes to people getting into internet you know we were poor so we I didn't really get on to that I started with mail order and then like mm -hmm. I, I I needed to uh, do you remember when the internet sucked and there wasn't stuff and nothing on there yeah Ernie B's time that's when you know we were we were you know I was doing the mail order when you said that it made me think yeah that's when that's when I stopped when the mail order stopped with you know because I because I wasn't was real savvy with the internet I, I, was, I wasn't even I had great deals didn't have a cell phone until I was 40 so. I had great deals <clears throat> so I go I go from from probably the earliest music I have is from the 30s yeah. from from that into the uh i have some elvis but only only enough to remind me of my grandmother's music ventures beach boys elvis uh nice. the mysterians and things like that um and then girl rock phil Spector <laughs> rock like the crystals and uh, the ron nets and nice. uh, gigantic ronnie Spector fan i love her i think she's, i forgot to mention british invasion no, no wave. wave no way like yeah. dna and yeah yeah dna and yeah. damien and a big DNA fan. Nice. Uh, yeah, a lot of experimental music as well. Yeah. And we both love Throbbing Gristle. And Throbbing, Throbbing SPK, yeah. White House. Yeah. Of that time. I guess you'd call it Power Electronics. Or, I guess you call it Industrial. I, I lumped Throbbing Gristle. When I first heard them in seventh grade, I lumped them in with the punk shit. Because I didn't know um, even the word industrial sixth grader. I didn't know that. I, mean, I hadn't even heard of uh, Nine Inch Nails. Yet, yeah. So I I didn't know any of that. I was just said, well, Throbbing Gristle is a punk band. And when I heard of the when I heard of Psychic TV, uh, it was through a video, the God Star video. I said he looks like um, a Throbbing d Gristle dude, but mm -hmm. older. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because Nine Inch Nails just got in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame this week. Uh, you see, but see, Motorhead didn't. See, that's why. See, I couldn't yeah. follow it. I couldn't yeah. follow because it, it just pissed me off. Yeah. It was just, oh yeah, it was. It was like I mean, th there was something for, I guess, rock purists in the fact that I think. Um, oh yeah, T Rex, T Rex did get in. T Rex is good. Yeah. So um, then I, I take it to uh, I like a little bit of uh, and taking taking into the, uh, the seventies. I like uh, I like all the garage rock stuff and all the psychedelic things. In the 80s, I, I like a little bit of, I have a taste of hardcore, I wouldn't say I was, in high school, for about two or three years, it was hardcore and nothing. If you listen to hardcore, then F you, you know, was, was, of course I was hanging out a lot with like you and Ron and Pritchett and Pritchett's brother Roger, rest in peace. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I was just like, if, if you're not with this, then F you, I did that for a couple of years, F you, you know, and then, uh. And I started getting into free improvisational jazz after that and opening it up. When I got, I got into, I started listening to reggae a lot at 18. Mm. And then that opened it 18 to 19, 2003 
to four. You know how I know that date? No. Because of the uh, first three albums I bought. Which was, were new back then. You right. have a Sizzla, uh, Capleton, and Anthony B. Yeah, they were all. You have dates new. of range from 2003 to 2004 that I got at the Dover Mall. I can't do that no more. No. no. Well, I don't know. Does FYE? They don't have, like, yeah, uh, yeah. world music. They're, they're more into. They're back, getting back into LPs and they'll have all, you know. Yeah, but. Yeah. They'll have then, stuff like. Rolling Stones next to Michael Jackson next to it's all you know <laughs> it's not really it's not really organized that I can tell it's not <clears throat> you know. I think I don't think the 90s was super great for, for contemporary music rock music has been boring for a long time yeah, yeah. the uh, the 90s saw the uh, you know the grunge thing with the year punk broke they called it and uh, my band was trying to ignore like they were trying to pretend like grunge never happened. Right. You know, they were just... I don't like any of that. The only yeah. band that I really recognized throughout that whole thing was the Melvins, because they were experimental enough. They have they have albums um, that I think are kind of funny, where their fans hate, where they're just like, it's just like they're doing a Lou Reed feedback for um, 45 minutes, and, you know, the crowd's like, boo! And they're just like, yeah, there's, there's, you know, they, like, they're pulling a Lou Reed, who was great, by the way. I, I love her, Lou Reed. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Velvet Underground, great. Gigantic hero. I mean, I don't, I don't follow him, too. I, I'm not listening to Lou Reed in the 90s, or yet. Right. I'm not familiar with it. It could be great, but I don't know, you know. Yeah, some people did like his 90s stuff, like Dirty Boulevard. I, I, I couldn't tell you if it, I couldn't tell you if I liked it or didn't like it. I, yeah, I don't you know. quit after Velvet Underground, it, Still well, have, I didn't. I have metal machine music, and yeah. and you know this this guy up here, which came damaged in the mail. Yeah, oh yeah, I saw that. Here, yeah. Yeah. Lou Reed. I had to buy that. Yeah, I bought that on, on the wall. Bought it on, on the CD. Wall. Metal machine music is is fantastic. I don't I don't think I've ever um, sat all the way through metal machine music yet. I got the extended cuts. But I did listen to Flipper's Brainwashed all the way through more than once. Well, I mean, that's, that's a great album. Yeah. Flipper, Flipper was a great band, to a yeah, point. I, I don't know if I'd want to be, I don't know if I'd be interested in anything I'm doing now, 2020. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, they, they were good to see the, the reunion that. tour with David Yowley had the vocals and they had Martin Atkins from Kill on. It was pretty, pretty heavy. Yeah, it was a good show. And then, you know, I, I when I get to know, uh, into the 90s, I like that Japanese stuff where it's just like uh, albums, um, a lot like the free jazz things of the 60s, void of all melody and or rhythm. I was going to say, you're not talking about Guitar Wolf. You're talking about like... I'm talking about like Haters, Guy Gay 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 Gay. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, God, what was the one? Was it Naked Garden or something? <laughs> Oh, boy. I wish I could remember who did it, but um, you would have liked it. Masona, Marisbal. I remember the album's called Lei Chi, which was like an execution method where they like flay you off. Lay off, and first they cut off your fingertips, and then your mid finger, then your whole finger, and then they cool. keep you like awake for the whole time, and the smell and salts or whatever they do um, to make sure you're awake. They have an interesting What's album here. It looks like it. No, never mind. Now, this is, this is Marisbal uh, producing a, a live recording mm -hmm. of Gore Beyond Necropsy, which is just pretty much it's like a band. Mm -hmm. But you have Marisbal, who is um, producing it. So, and, you know, you can kind of hear drums, but it's just blaring noise. It's, it, like, there's drums, but it's, it's void of all melody or rhythm. And sometimes after a long day at work, you know, that's cool. Um... <laughs> You know, I don't, so, especially, this is this is not so now, like, now they play, uh, we have a radio where, where I work now, it's like 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s. Was it open? Yep. Nice. Um, which is great, 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s, it's awesome. At the hair cuttery, though, that's when I grabbed my noise stuff the most, because <laughs> yeah. it was, it was like, Radio Disney in there all day. Yeah. 
you know, and, and I wanted to hear the opposite of music when I got off. I just wanted to put some, and this is just like, I mean, you've heard this stuff before from me. It's like, sure. <laughs> yeah. just for, you know, two hours. And, you know, sometimes, and here, here's an interesting one. This is, uh, this is the 25th anniversary of the haters. Uh, this, so it's a data disc. And it goes for, you can put it in the computer and play it. I can play it in my MP3 CD player. Uh, it's a 25 hour CD. Wow. Uh, so it plays for 25 hours? 25 hours, yeah. Of blaring noise. Wow. And this cat's like 60. I mean, he, uh, the haters were a punk band in 1978. Okay. And uh, I don't even think they had any releases, but like in the 80s, he went the route of Robin Gristle and SKK and like White House and all them and started doing like noise and stuff like that. So that was cool. That was cool. 25th anniversary, 25 minutes. I think I paid $25 for that. <laughs> yeah. And then, you know, just the noise stuff. I, think, I, I don't want to go too far into noise, but you know. Then here's a cocky ST record. It came in a diaper. Wow, look at that. You know, it's a record, you say? No, this is a tape. Oh, okay. Yeah. The tape came in a diaper. Came in a diaper. That reminds me of... Um, well, I, I do have like this this noise record from the late 80s. They had a little spot of blood on the, in the bottom. Nice. But, um, yeah, this uh, band was called Carolina Rainbow Open Wound Corral. <laughs> and, uh, that sounds that sound pretty cool. And it was, it was good stuff, but the... Um, the record uh, sleeves they made for it were handmade, and they also had like sand and sandpaper on them. So, records and sandpaper don't mix. So good. I remember Be careful putting them back. The Spoets CD that I uh, had recorded from you. I I have no. I do not even have that anymore. The Spoets. I wonder if I still have that. The Serial Poets. That is gone. Yeah. Some fucking how. Can you cuss on YouTube? I'm gonna I'm gonna research that. Yeah, I mean my, my son watches the videos and, and they they cuss and they cuss all the time. I mean this yeah. isn't blippy. Yeah, yeah, I mean it's he watches like baseball blogs and they're cussing on that. So you know. <clears throat> all right. What are we at here? Thirty-seven minutes. Cool, you can edit some out. <laughs> some of the, um, you yeah, because I, I think that's a great introductory. You don't, you don't want to do it too long because you don't want yeah. people to be like, you know. Yeah. Well, you don't, you don't want to. I, I like about 30 minutes. Thir I like between 30 and, and 45 minutes. So we're going to cut this out. And we will uh, be back with you soon with, you know, with another uh, episode. Yes, and I just want to say zip, zam, bow, and swoosh. <laughs>